Hey, how's it going everyone? In today's project, we're going to create a timesheet calculator. Basically, you can calculate the work, the amount of work time in a week, in a month, in a day. So for example, if you would work on Monday and you would start at 7 and a.m. and you would have a break at 13 p.m. or 1 p.m., then start your break at 2 p.m. So basically one hour break. Wait, we need here too. And then stop your work at, let's say, 17 p.m. Then you will have nine hours worked and on that specific day. Also down here is going to calculate the total amount of hours worked. For example, the next day, let's say it's Tuesday. And again, you will work from 7 and a.m. And you would not take any kind of break. So you could leave this completely open. And you would work until 2 p.m. Then you will have seven hours worked. And down here, you will see you will have 16 hours. Now you can do this for one entire week, one entire month, or for an entire year as you wish. We'll see later on how you will add multiple columns to, to this web application. Also, you have a kind of validation if you would add something without entering day. Uh, so the work day, the amount of work, you st the, uh, the hour that you started working and the hour at, that you ended working, this will not let you proceed with the calculations. Also, you have a check sign if you entered everything correctly. Now, this is a pretty large project. We're going to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're going to create the project files. Then we're going to create this timesheet table. As you can see, you will see this is a table. Then we're going to style the table. We're going to use custom CSS fonts. This is using Roboto fonts. We're going to do general resets, and we're going to use CSS variables, and then style the body and the project container with them. We're also going to use here a random uh, avatar generator using an API. So an API with it generates random, API, uh, random avatars. Then this is here. Each one of them is a form. So each one of this, this table rows is a form. We're going to show you how you can insert them using JavaScript. So they're not going to be in your HTML tag. Then we're going to calculate each and every hour, each and every work hour, each and every break hour, and yeah, fun times ahead. So let's get started with the project. All right, so let's get started with the project. Now for this, I just created an empty folder, dragged and dropped it into our Visual Studio Code editor. This is Visual Studio Code. This is what I'm using usually for editing the code. Okay, so let's get started by creating our index.html file. Going to start out here with the boilerplate shift exclamation mark this is going to give us the html boilerplate and also going to quickly create our style.css file and then our script.js file okay we're not going to use them right now so i'm just going to close them up and go back into our html also i'm going to close up the left side so the explorer tab because you don't need it this is Control b or command b on a mac Okay, let's give this puppy a title. Now, first above the title, let's link up our style.css file and let's change the title here to employee, employee uh, time sheet calculator. Calculator. Okay, times, not times, time sheet. What did I type in here? On? Oh, should have a space here. Okay, down in our body tag, just going to link up our script tag. So, script and the source will be script because we are in the same so script and JS because we are in the same folder. Now, with this being done, we can now get started with creating the timesheet table. For this, I'm going to create a div with a class of container. Within this container, I'm going to have a header. And you know what? I'm also going to open this up using our live service, so open, right click, open with live server. This is just the extension from your extension tags. So live server, and you can, this one right here, and you can install it if you don't have it. Okay, this will open up our project. I'm going to move it here. And also I'm going to leave up the finish, leave open the finished project. Within our header, we're going to give the header a class of person. So class with the name of person, or you can also type an employee as you wish. And within here, I'm going to have a div. Now this needs to be a div because it has a specific properties and with the class of person dot F or dash avatar, avatar. And after the avatar, we're going to create an H1 with the class of person and names where the name will be. And we're going to just type in here, Jane Doe. And obviously you can use whatever name you want. Okay, you can always see appearing here. After our header, we're going to create a section tag. We're going to call this section and we're also going to give this a class. We're going to have the class of table and head. Head. 
basically, if we go to our finished project, it's going to be this part. So this is the container. This is where the avatar and the name will live. And after that, we're going to create this part right here. We have our days, start work, start break and break and work and hours per day work at the end of the day. Okay, so in our section, let's go to our section of header and I'm going to go back. So basically we're going to create these uh, six fields and these are going to be also input tags. You could obviously use something else, but I'm going to use input tags. We're going to just going to style input tags. So input, we're going to use a type of text. So two dots, uh, hyphen and text. And I'm also going to give this the class. So dot class and type in here, actually not <laughs> just dot because this means I'm going to create a class and orange. Boom. And we can delete the name and ID. And what we do need after class, I'm going to type in here a value. And the value will be days for this specific one. Now I'm going to copy this five more times. So copy and paste one, two, three, four, and five. And let's change. So the text will be the same for all of them. And we're going to change the classes here to blue. Wait a second. Blue, blue. What am I doing? Blue. Then the next, then the value of this will be start work. Then the next one will be green and it's going to have class of start and break because also need to take breaks when you're working. And then another green with end break. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it down here and change this to end. Now we have up here start work and to copy paste it down here it's going to be end work, change the orange to blue, the same thing that we have up here. And the last one is going to be purple. So the class of purple and we're going to have here our hours slash days per so hours per day, so the amount of hours that we worked in one day. Okay, so we all have here input tags. And one last thing I want to add here is hold down alt so click once here, then hold down alt and click through all of them because I don't want to be able to change the value in here. So I'm going to make them disabled. Okay. And now we cannot change the value in here. If I would uh, delete it from the very first one, hit save. No, it's safe here. Then I could type in here something else. Okay. And don't want to be able to type in there anything else than what the value actually is. So I'm just blocking the value. Okay, it's time for the next section, which will be the table body. This is this part right here and it ends down here. So before the total and work this is going to be the table footer. So before, uh, after this section, we're going to create another section tag section, I'm going to give this the class of table and uppercase body. Now the table is going to consist of table rows and I'm not actually creating a HTML table because of problems that tables that HTML tables then give us later on in using CSS and JavaScript. I'm going to create this table using divs, but I'm going to give it classes of table rows. So the first div, so just dot because it's going to create a class TR, which is going to be table row within this TR. And actually let me copy this and paste it multiple times in. Let's just say four, five. Okay. That should be no six times because we're going to have five days. So table row, the first table row, will consist of, yeah, because I'm going to comment this out. So this very first one, I'm going to create it in HTML, HTML, and then we're going to style it. And later on, I'm going to comment it out, or actually also, you can also delete it. But I'm going to leave it in there as, um, because you will have the entire code down in the description below. And we're going to move this code, what's going to be in here into JavaScript, because all of these table rows will be generated when the page loads. With this, you do not have to create multiple table rows. So you, we will see this is going to be a very long code, but they're actually going to be generated or pushed in automatically using a async function and a EEF and immediately invoke function into your HTML. So let's get started. So the very first one is going to be, let's just go down here. We're going to have a form. So form, and we don't need any kind of action because we're going to take care of this later on in JavaScript. So the first one form is going to have table, a table head and then table columns. So we're going to do here a th and this th will have a input tag with a type of text. Then it's going to have a class of orange. So basically we're reproducing what we have up here. So I could actually just copy this, paste it in here. Now this is not going to be disabled because in our day it's going to also have the value of 
enter actually not the value it's going to be placeholder so placeholder is going to be enter day so going to enter the day that you're working on basically if you take a look in our finished project it's going to be here so here monday you can type out monday or just the abbreviation of monday and that's going to come uh after that we're going to have an input tag for it when we start to work when we start the break when we end the break and when we ended our work and this is going to be after submitting using the submit button and also completing all of the fields going to calculate the hours that we worked in one day so let's move back to our project so basically we need to enter here the day so monday for example later on and next after this th we're going to create a td and in this td i'm going to copy this paste it in here and instead of having here the type of text we're going to have type of time okay because we need to select here a time when we, we could either select it or just type it in and am and pm so far and so on so we're going to change the class of this to blue and we're also going to give it a id of start dash work because this is basically what we're doing here and we do not need a placeholder as you can imagine now i'm going to copy this td once and going to paste it one two three four times so one two three four let's hit save next is going to be so input type of time class we're going to change this to green and id will be well we had here start work but we need now to start our break so start break again the next one the same thing we're going to leave the class blue because we are going to be in the blue quadrant and we're going to end break then we're going to end work and this should also be green. All of the types for entering times will remain time. So all the types of the input tags. But for the very last one, I'm going to delete the type completely, change the class to worked hours and purple. Now I'm also going to give this a value because I don't want to see here a default value of 00 hyphen 00, basically in indicating a time. And we're also going to make this disabled and uh, let me just think about yeah we do not need the id so we just may need to make this disabled we're not able to change anything in here this is going to be changed after the calculation takes place so the last thing that we need is actually here a submit button as you can see here and we're going to just go down here create another td then a button and this button is going to have a class of btn and because this button is now in the form we need to submit the form so i'm going to give this the type of submit and I'm going to give it the text of add okay and we have everything that we need so once again this part right here will be wait a second so the entire form actually also the tr will be then later on moved to javascript but i'm going to leave it in here first of all it's much easier to type it out using html and uh, emit and second of all now actually not now but soon <laughs> we're going to move to style but the last thing that we need to add here is after this section, the table footer. So another section tag dot for the class and table and footer. And there should be two of footer. And let's get started by adding here another, you know what? I'm just going to copy it from up here. I'm going to add an input tag. The class is going to be red. The value will be just total. So the title of total. And well, we could add a type to this type of text and you know what yeah i need to leave this disabled because i don't want uh, don't want anyone to be able to change the text in here the very last thing that we need is still in our footer so we just added this total field here and now the time so somewhere where the output of the time will happen this will signify the total amount of time worked in a week or a month or whatever so I just copied this, oops, just deleted something. So I just copied this, put it down here and let's change now the, actually, you know what? I'm going to give it a ID now. So ID of total worked and hours. Uh, the class can be still, whoa, why do I have here purple? The class can remain red. We do not need any kind of type here. Actually, I could also delete the type up here. So we have less code and the value will be the default value because this value will change it's going to be worked or work hours okay so that's well that's kind of it for our html we can now move on to to style everything 
So next we're going to create a style. So we're going to move to our style sheet and to open up our style sheet and create the styling for our timesheet table. So we're going to style everything that is in here. Okay, first step will be to create a custom font or to import a custom. Then we're going to do a general reset for everything because you can see we have here margins and paddings that we don't need. And then also we're going to add a couple of CSS variables and style our body and our project containers. So we're going to use Google fonts for our custom font. It's going to go to fonts, search for, actually it is, or if you don't see it, Roboto is the font that we're going to use. I'm going to deselect everything that is here. And the way you do this is just go down here. And if you wish to have all of the font strength or all of the font weights, then you just add whichever font weight you wish. So we're going to add the 100, the 400. These are all regular, so not italic. Uh, the mini medium of 500, a bold of 700, and the bold of 900, okay? Now all of them are added here. You can either import them using the link, which is going to import it or link it up in your HTML or import it in. So basically, as you can see, it's be between style tags. I'm going to import it in within here in our CSS, which so at import, just copy in this part right here. Now let's do a general reset. I'm actually going to make this. Also, let me copy in the font family, which is going to be in here. Make this smaller and we can close up Google Fonts and we can now move to our project back and the star selector is the selector for the general reset. So let's first of all change the font. Oh, actually I do have it in a copy. So font family Roboto, which you just paste it in. Then we're going to change the margins. So the all around margins for our project will be zero. You can see it's disappearing and all our padding for our project will be also zero. And we can now change or add uh, custom styles for margin and padding. Next, we're going to create CSS variables because we're going to use a bunch of variables here for, as you can see here, we have a, a light, a dark orange, then a light orange. We have a dark blue, then a light blue, green, and so forth and so on. Now these are all achieved using variables. And also if you wish to change them up later on, that then variables can be extremely helpful. So in order to create variables, we're going to use the root selector. And first things first, hyphen, hyphen, this is the way you declare a variable, then the variable name. So dark, let's start up with dark. I love the darkness, dark green and let's add here the color of hexadecimal so hex and zero or c then ca614 close it up then hyphen hyphen light dash green and this is going to be hyph, uh, hash effbf0 now i have to have add a bunch of other variables i don't want to type them all out if you wish you can type them all out uh, just pause the video here or not pause the video but <laughs> each time up uh, wait a second. So I'm going to copy them all in. Don't want to waste your time. Listen to me type out hexadecimal numbers. And these are the variables we're going to work, work on. Now you can pause the video here if you wish and just type them all out. Okay, so just pause the video and come back when you're finished. Oh, and also the code is down in the description. So you can grab onto the code if you wish so. But as an exercise, if you're not, if you're not um, familiar working with variables, then I would suggest that you type them all out in order to have ex uh, your exercise. So now you can remember that we added some type of classes here. We added blue, uh, green, and so forth and so on. These actually come from these classes. So let's create the blue class and the blue class will have a background color of var. So this is how we use a variable. We're going to use the light blue here and then the color will be var again. I'm going to use the dark green color Whoa, not dark green, dark blue color right here. Okay, because I always see this taking effect. So I'm going to create one more and then I'm going to copy paste them all in because it's just repetitive. So the next one is going to be green, uh, background color. We're going to use the var and then we can use the light, where is it? Light green. And then we're going to add a color, not the column rule, color. What am I doing? color, you could also type in hyphen hyphen, it should automatically appear of dark green is going to edit in a parenthesis and add the var before it. So green, missing an N here, and green is also appearing. So we're missing purple, orange and red. And I'm going to copy and paste them in. There we go. You could pause the video, type them all out. If you're not familiar working with variables, or you could just copy and paste the code from the code down in the description for the source code. 
Okay, next, 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 next. Let's add a background color to our body. So I'm going to select the body. I'm going to also give this a background color of a variable color of light and purple. And the very last thing that I'm going to do, actually not the last thing, but in this chapter, we're going to grab onto our container and let's define it a bit. As you can see the container is this part right here. And if I make this larger, you'll see it's centered in the page. It's centered from top, centered from bottom. And actually now it's pushed down from the top, not centered, but it's centered from left and right. And it has a specific width, which cannot change. I didn't make this uh, responsive. So it should shrink down and so forth and so on because I wanted to concentrate on the JavaScript part of this project. So add a, let's add a static width of 1000 pixels. Let's also move back to our project. There we go. It's now only 1000 pixels, right? And now let's change its position to relative because I'm going to position a bunch of things here. Absolute. Oh, no, actually just the avatar will be positioned absolute. But you need to position the container relative in order to position a object that is in the container. If you also take a look in your HTML, bum, 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 you see this div, this is the main div. If I close this div up, you see everything is in this one div. This is kind of React, but it's not React. But we're getting to React <laughs> sooner or later. So header, which contains our person, avatar, and name, are will be positioned absolute in this relative container. For this, the container needs to be relative or its position. Okay, now let's add a margin of auto, which will now push it to the center of the page or left and right. And now I'm going to add a margin from the top of 200 pixels, which then push it down to 100 pixels from the top. Okay, now let's add a background color of the very color of dark and purple. You can obviously change it if you wish, if you don't like the colors. Now let's add a all around padding of one RAM, then a padding from the top of six RAM, a padding from the left of six RAM. I'm also going to explain why I'm doing this. So top and left needs to have six RAM in order for, <laughs> for this to fit in here. Okay, so you can see it has more padding on the left and top side than it has on the right and bottom side. Next, let's give it a bit of border radius. So you can see up here and up and down here and actually all around border is a border is okay let's type it up border and radius of one ram and let's change the border style so actually i'm going to give it a color so one pixel the strength or the thickness of the border is going to be a solid border is going to be rgba of a complete darker so zero for the red zero for the green zero for the blue and 0 0.2 for the alpha and there we go we have a light border border there now the last thing that I want to do to this container is add a box shadow in order to make the container pop out a bit. So box shadow and five pixels, five pixels, 15 pixels, three pixels, and a RGBA of actually three. And there we go. Okay, so this makes the application or the application part pop out a bit. Okay, so now we can move on to generate a random avatar using an API and also style it. For this, you need to go to, or you can also look for one if you look for one that you like on a different website, but I'm going to use the avatars.dicebear.com. It's a pretty cool avatar. You can just go to the docs, then HTPI, and let me think about what, what did I use? I used a human. Yeah, should be somewhere here, bridge, human. Yep, this kind of avatar. So just stay on this side and we're going to come to this just in a couple of seconds. So we're going to type in here comment uh, person and let's grab onto the person class. So person and first thing first, I'm going to give it a background color so you can see it where it's going to be. So red, now let's, ooh, let me also go to the website. So this is the person, you can see it takes off the entire width of its container. Now let's position it, as I said, absolute. Okay, you can see it's kind of overlaying everything, but now we can push it up by going top minus 70 pixels and then from the left not flex but left what am i doing left <laughs> and minus one minus one pixel next we're going to display it as flex because in this person we have two things we have our person avatar which is a div and then we have the title which is, or yeah the name which is in an h1 both of them are block elements so as soon as i display them as flex they will flex in a column direction or in a row direction. And now I'm going to align them flex and 
in order to be pushed down a bit. Okay, next let's grab onto the person dash avatar. I'm going to scroll up here a bit. And first let's define a height and a width for it. So height 150 pixels, a width of also 150 pixels. Basically it's going to be square. Now let's chop down the border by giving it a border radius of 50%, which is going to make it round. Border radius, why isn't this round? Oh, because you can't see the avatar right now. Uh, so I'm going to, let's add to this a background, background color of dark purple, and you would shortly see it. Okay, there it is. So dark purple, and you can see it now as it is here. And now we need an avatar. And for this, we're going to use background and URL. And now if you go back to our API, you can just copy it. Let me see. Uh, let's go to the APIs. And here somewhere should be human, human, human options. Uh, where the heck was it? Ah, oh, there we go. So let's go to styles and then human. And you just need to copy in this part right here. So this copy it. Oh, did I put copy in everything? Yep. Copy it and paste it within quotation marks paste it in here, hit save, and there we go, there's our human. Ah, I think I used something else. I used open, oh wait, 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 sorry, I used open pierce. Now, at the end of the day, you just need to copy this part, and instead of human, replace it with open seeds, hit save, and there we go, there's a wonderful lady right there. So, you have your avatar. Now I'm going to comment out this background red, and the last thing that I want to do is change the name color and also add a bit of shadow to it. So person, person and name. And let's change the color to hash FFF, which is going to be basically white. And let's also add a, hey, per, missing an S there. And let's add a text shadow to it. So text and shadow one pixel, two pixels, two pixels and RGBA of zero, zero, zero. So completely dark and 0 0.4 for the alpha. And you can see, makes the name pop a bit. Now let's also change the font size of the name. So let's change the font size to let's say 2.5 RAM, or you could also make it larger if you wish. Now let's also go to our finished project. You can see here weeks. Now, because I actually want to let me also comment out the rest of them. I only want to work on a simplified version for now. I am going to comment out the last of them. And we're just going to concentrate on one week. You can see this is much cleaner, much easier for you to understand. But uh, if you add multiple weeks, if you add all of the weeks in one year, you could, you will actually get the total amount of time that uh, you work. So let's say 10 p.m. and you work till this time and add, oh yeah, we also add, need to add here a day. So Monday and add it, you can see it calculates with uh, 12 hours. If you add a break, let's say you had a break from here to, to two o'clock, PM, it will subtract one hour. So if I would recalculate this or just hit here, enter, it's going to, let's, let's change this to three hours, zero three and hit enter. You can see it recalculates it. Okay. So let's move back to our project. We still have a bunch of things to style. So as I said, we, you, if you want to style that week, you just need to add the week class and we're going to add here color and the same color FFF and the same box shadow. So basically you could just copy this, but leave the font size uh, at the regular font size. Okay, now we can move on to style the HTML form, inputs and table body, header and footer, of course. Okay, for this, I'm going to also select all of the section tags, comma, all of the forms. And what do I mean by all of the forms? You will see later on. Just please don't forget, then w this is one form in one TR and each TR or each table row will have its own form. So basically, if you have uh, how many weeks are in one year, uh, 50 something weeks, 54, 56 weeks, if you add 56 TRs, you will have 56 forms at the end of the day. Okay, so let me save here, save here. Why do I have two ladies? Hum, bum, pum, pum. I messed up something. Uh, let me just think about it. Form, form, form. I messed up something. Okay, <laughs> I think I copy and paste it in, in here. Okay, so sections and forms. We have multiple sections and we will have multiple forms. All of these forms and sections will be displayed. So display as flex and all of, the, all of them will have a gap of 15 pixels. And there we go. 
Next, let's move to the table body. So section with the class of table body. I'm going to give this a margin. So each of, not each, but uh, the section with the class of table body will have a margin to the top of one RAM. Basically going to push it down a bit and let's change the flex direction. So flex direction, flex to column because for now they are spanning in a row. Okay, now let's move on to the input tag. So input, we're going to select all of our input tags and let's just move down here. We don't need this right now. We need a max width. So all of the input tags will not have a maximum width larger than 50 pixels. Now this really depends on the resolution of your screen. If you see this, this is too much, this is, uh, or this is not enough, then please increase the width of your of your pixels right here because we'll see later on it will not fit in here when we're going to also increase its font size. Now let's take out the borders and the outlines from our input tags by selecting first of all our outlines. Let's change this to none. Let's take out all the outlines basically when you have something selected it's... Let me show you this again. Uh, so if I have something selected you can see the outline there. If I type it as none then boom it's gone. Now also let's remove the borders border none because we're going to change it later on. Now let's add a border radius to them of 10 pixels, a height of 30 pixels. Now as I said, we're going to increase the font size, so font and size to 1.1 RAM. If this is too large or too small for you, then please increase or decrease it. Also let's change the font width or the font weight to 500. Now let's add some padding to it. We're going to go with top and bottom and left and right. So Top and bottom 0 0.15 RAM and uh, da, 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 so RAM and left and right 0 0.75 RAM. Hey, RAM, come on. Okay, last thing that I want to do is align the text. So text align center, align the text to not items, align text align and center. You can see the entire text is now aligned to the center in each and every input tag. Um, seem to be missing something because the border radius should be both. Okay, sorry about that. So border radius 10 pixel S without the S there. Okay, next let's style our inputs in the table head only. So for this, we're going to grab onto the class of table and head. And within here, we're going to select our input tags. So only the input tags that are in the table head. Let's change our height to 15 pixels. And let's also, actually that's all I want to do. <laughs> change the height to 50 pixels. Now for the table footer, so class, table, and footer. We're going to in increase the margin from the top to one RAM. If you're wondering why we have here space, it's because what we have in our HTML. Now let's display this as flex because I want to be able to move these to each of them to the end of its container. So for this, we can just use justify content and space between the elements, which just means going to push them to the margins of its container. Now, I want to specifically target this right here. We're going to need to push it a bit back. So let's go ahead, copy, yeah, copy the table footer. And if you take a look in our HTML, you will see that within the table footer, we have the ID of total work, work hours. Let's just copy this hash ID total work hours. And we can push it back a bit by giving it a margin from the right of 110 pixels. And this should push it back right here. Actually, you know what? Let's remove this. Let's do this 100. Uh, nope. Let's do 90. What am I doing? So let's do 90. Yeah, this, this, this is pretty much aligned now correctly. And we don't need to hear E and also here ours. Now we're not done yet. The last thing that we need to do is style these buttons or this button. For now, it's just one button, but if it's styled, we're going to style then all of these buttons. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a uh, ground to the button class. Let's change its background color first of all. So background color, and I'm going to leave it as inherit. This is because we're going to change the background color depending on in which state it is. I'm, I'm using state here. We're not doing react, but you will see if this form is submitted, then this button is going to do something specific. And that specific thing is going to turn green. So the background is going to turn green. Also the uh, instead of the text, we're going to have here a check sign. It's also almost a Nike sign. No, Nike is horizontal. Okay, so we, in order to do this, we're going to use JavaScript, but for now, let's just leave our background color inherit. So let's change now the border to one pixel 
solid let's add a gray color to it and for this just going to the hexadecimal color of you know what i actually have a gray da, 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 dark gray i need a light gray here okay so it's there but it's pretty light okay now for the color going to use a white color so fff -F -F. then when we hover over it going to have a cursor pointer now let's increase its font size to 1.1 ram let's change the font weight to 500 let's add a bit of a padding top and bottom 0.15 ram and left and right 0.75 ram okay three things i still want to add that's a border radius of five pixels and a box shadow of well it's basically almost the same box shadow but let's change up a bit here so free and rgba uh, let's go with this one okay so there's our button now because the button will have transitions hover transition and also click effect transition i'm going to add a transition to all of this so transition and you can select all transition by typing all 0.3 seconds and let's say ease you can also use linear or easy in ease out whichever floats your boat okay next up let's target the button class let's add a hover effect to it. so when we hover our button the background color will change to the variable color of light green let's see if you hover over it it's going to change to light green and the color of the text within it is going to be var and dark green okay so if i hover over the button it's going to be a light green and a dark green for the text now when i click the button for this we need to grab the button and as a add a active to it not the p active there we go when i click the button i want they want to want to be able to see that something happens so we're going to do a transform and we're going to transform its scale to 0.95 which basically means 95 percent of its initial scale or so we're shrinking it down by five percent so we click on it you can see it it shrinks down a bit and what am i doing here so only one time okay there we go okay in order to close up our css i'm going to add a class that we will use later on in javascript so dot btn and green now when this class exists then the background color will change to var dark green and the color of the text will change to hash EEE. -E -E. Okay, so this is not taking effect because the button does not have this class, but we're going to add this class to this button if the form was successfully submitted. And with this, we just concluded our CSS also. So now we can move on to JavaScript. So I'm basically going to close up the CSS file and open up the JavaScript file. First things first, let's get all table rows from the DOM. Now remember, we created here multiple table rows. Also, the very first form is in a table row. In order to get them, let's, let's go up here, let's create a const, and let's call this table body trs. Now let's go to the document, create a selector, and we're going to select from the class of dot table body, we're going to now dot create selector all classes of table row, okay? I can basically just console log them by console log the table body. Let's save, open up the console, right click, inspect on our, let's move this down, it should be down here. Go to the console, you can see if I hit save, it's got to give me this node list and it's going to select each div with the class of TR. Okay, we have six at the moment, but the very first one will disappear just in a couple of minutes and uh, we're going to replace it with these right here. Okay, so as I said, the form that is in here will be pushed in each table row. So let's create a function now that is going to push in each table row a form. First things first, we're going to create a function that's going to create a form. So we're going to create here a function, call it create form. I'm using an E here. So this function will create a form. For this, we're going to use a we're going to use a variable, so form, and we're going to use here the document dot create element and we're going to create a, a form element now this form element will have as a inner html and we're going to use here backticks or basically a template literal so what should this form contain well if you go back to our html you will see that your form contains this right here so let's copy everything that is in the form including the button copy it go to your javascript paste it in here hit save and now this function needs to well, return this variable 
as well at the end of its functionality. So we're going to go at the end of the function, going to return the form. Okay. So this is all this function does. It creates a form and puts in its in the HTML this right here. So basically, if you would console log this function, so the entire function, I'm also going to comment out this console log, then you should see a form created. And if you click in the form, you will see the HTML text or the HTML content that is in the form. But for now, this is just a element. Now we need to add all of these form elements to each of those TRs that we grab onto. So we had our body, we have our table rows from our body. Now we need to add them as soon as the page loads. Now for this, first of all, I'm going to comment out, I'm going to go back to our HTML and the very first TR that we have, which contains the form, I'm going to comment out. Okay, so we basically don't have anything in our body. Next, let's go back to our JavaScript and we're going to create here a IFF, a IIFE or a iffy or a immediately invoked function expression. In order to create this, we're going to open and close parentheses, and we're going to also end it with open and close parentheses. What does this mean? That this function will be created and executed. Within here, I'm going to use a async function. So we're going to use async, then a arrow function, and this function will do the following. It's going to grab onto the table body TRs variable, then loop over it. So I'm going to use a for each loop and for each TR that is in here, I'm going to use an error function, basically a callback function. I'm going to grab onto the TR and append. So to each of them, I'm going to append this function right here, which will create a form. Okay, paste it in here. And now if I hit save, take a look here. I just messed up here. Inner HTML, inner HTML, and there we go. Each TR just got his, himself a form. And I think I have too many days. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep, too many days. Let's go back. Let's delete uh, W. There should be only five days in one week. Or if you're working on Saturday, then, well, you can add it. Or if you're working on Sunday, you can add it. Okay, so this is what this function does. As soon as the page loads, it's going to asynchronously grab onto all of the forms and all of the table rows and insert in them a form that is created by this function right here. Okay, we got this part done. Now we need to do something with these forms. For example, if I submit one of these forms, you can see the page refreshing. So this is first of all, it's default behavior, the form wishes to submit something, we need to stop it. In order to grab onto all of the forms in our DOM, well, we need again to go to our DOM. So next, let's create a const. Let's call this forms. Let's go to the document. So after it's loaded and there should be forms. What am I doing here? So after the page has loaded, it, it inserted the forms in here. Next step, because this is now synchronous code, this is asynchronous. Next, we're going to grab onto to those forms. So create a selector and all because we want to grab onto all of the forms in the HTML. We can also console log them you know, to prove this. I'm going to grab up here a node list of five forms. If I would, as I said, if I would add here this, then it's going to add multiple forms. So each time I add a TR, it's going to loop over it and drip, add a form to it. So let's just remain by one five days week. Now we grab down to all of our forms I'm going to constantly <laughs> comment out those console logs. Next, we need to add a submit event listener to all of the forms. For this, we're going to grab onto the forms variable, use a for each loop again. So for each form, you're going to take that form and add a event listener to it. So form add event listener of submit. And when the submit happens, then a anonymous callback function will do something. The first thing that this is going to do is prevent the default behavior. So we need to enter here the, not this, sorry, the event, the event is of submission. And now we can grab onto the event and prevent its default behavior. This means that when I'm clicking on the add event, you can see it's no longer submitting. If I would take this out, comment this out, click on it, then it's going to try to submit the form and the page is refreshing and everything that you type in here will then disappear sadly. So add and boom, it's gone. I don't want to do this. We want to grab on to those, to those um, values and calculate them. 
Okay, next thing that we need to do is when we're submitting the form, we need to grab values. For this, we're going to go in our form, in each and every form, don't forget, we're grabbing, we're adding submit events to each and every form. And we're now going to grab values from each and every form. But in order to define in which form we are, we're going to listen to the event. So first, let's just grab onto the day. This means this right here. The day will be necessary for the validation part only. So let's say day, const day, and let's go to, now remember, we're creating here event. The event is submit. And if I'm clicking on this button, then it's actually targeting this form. So we, we can listen to this form by grabbing on to the event on which that form is happening. So event.target.children. And let me just show you something before I'm actually doing this. So if I would console log day now, you know what, I'm just going to console log the e.target children so you can see something here. So I'm clicking here. It's going to give me one single form. You can see if I hovering over this, it's going to give me the day, the input of orange, which is the very first one, which is day, then the next input, the next input, next input. You can see it's not console logging all of the forms, although I'm looping over them because it's specifically console logging one target. Now this dot children is actually this. Let me take this out, hit save. If I submit one of the forms, you can see if I'm only getting the input text, I'm not going, not getting a list of children, which this form has. So if I do here children, add again, you can see I'm getting an HTML collection of seven elements. Each of them starting with zero, basically like an array, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now I can specifically target one of them. If I want to get, grab onto end, uh, end break, which is this one right here, I just need to grab onto number three. Okay, and now if I submit something, then I should only get this input tag. Now this is really useful because I now can also grab onto the value of this input tag. Again, if I'm submitting, well, there's no value because I didn't enter anything in here, but if I'm doing now a then PM, going to, oh, sorry, and break, and adding this, you can see I'm getting the value. Now, we're not talking about type of values right now, but just so you know, this is how we get values. Now, if I want to grab onto the day, which will this be? You guessed it, it's zero. And I also don't want to grab onto the input tag, but I want to grab onto its value. Basically, this means that if I would now console log day here, if I click on the very first one and I'm not getting anything, but if I type in here, MO, Monday, then I'm getting Monday. Okay, hope you understand this. So let's leave this console log in there. Uh, and I'm going to grab on now to start work, start break, end break, and end work. You do remember that they also have I believe uh, they also have, no, they don't have ID. No, yep, they have IDs, but I don't need those IDs right now because if I'm grabbing onto one ID, as you maybe learned in my JavaScript course, then you're getting the very first ID in the list. So you can only grab onto the very first ID. IDs are unique. Also, if you're grabbing onto all of these, mm, well, that's not the right way to do this. So we need to grab onto each element in the form that is submitted. This is why we're using the event and target. Okay, let's move on. So const next, we need the start work. And it's going to be, again, the same thing that we have here. So e target, so far and so on, but it's going to be number one. And we're just going to copy this, bum, 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 bum. Paste it in a couple of times. Then the next one is going to be break. It's going to be number two. Then we're going to have end break. So let's copy this, paste it in here, change this to end, end break. This is going to be number three. And then we need to end our work. So end work, which is the number four. Now we're not done yet. We still need two things. One is going to be worked, how long we worked, basically this one right here, and the submit button. But these will be values that will change or actually elements that will change. So I'm not going to use cons, but I'm going to use let in order to make them interchangeable. So uh, worked, it's going to be e dot target dot children or children, yeah, children. And then number five, and the last one will be number six. And its name will be the submit and ptn. Okay, so we have everything that we need. You could also console log each one of them on its own or console log them all in order to check if you grabbed out onto the, to the right input tags. Okay, we can move on now. 
before we do any kind of calculations, we want to check if uh, we want to add some kind of validation. So in order for the user not to mess up, the user needs to input the day, the start hour and the end hour. The, the break hours, he doesn't need to input because you can work without breaks. You can work, for example, only five hours and you're not taking any kind of break. And this calculation should still work. So it will not take into consideration the break time. Okay, so let's add some sort of validation. Now remember, we're, we're still in our submit event because the submit will not take place if the form does not validate. So let's type in a comment, validation, and let's create a function that will validate our submission. So validate and submission. Okay, open and close parentheses, and this is not the, I'm going to just copy it because this is not the actual function, but it's going to be as type in here a to do create validation function. Okay, now we're going to use the function. Hey, what am I doing? Click here function keyword and this function will do something. So this function should check if the day, hey, what is happening here? Okay, so this function should check if the day is entered, if the start uh, hour is entered and the end hour is entered. And then by clicking on the submit button, it should, well, approve or not your form validation. So this means I need to have here some kind of variables, some kind of parameters. So the first parameter will be day, then start work, then end work, and also the submit button. And the submit button is very important because we want the button to change if, you can see here, if the form is valid. So what is the condition? We're going to use here if statement. So if something, what am I doing? If something, then something, and else, something else. Now this if something is just going to do a simple validation. If the day is empty, and remember we are using here their values, or if the start work is empty, or just a second out there, or if the end work is, we're not assigning it, we're checking it, is a empty string. Then we're going to alert, basically use the Windows alert, complete work day, start and end hour, start and end and work hour, okay? And you could already try this out. So if you try to submit the form now, you should, oh, we need to actually add them. So I'm just going to copy them and add them in here, okay? Because we are now taking each variable, passing them into this function, and this function is going to do something. Okay, and else return true. So if them, if these are empty, then let's click on submit. Boom, doesn't let me do anything. But if I type in here something, you also type in anything you want. This is not, um, this is not checking for if it's really, really Monday. And then we're still trying to submit, this won't work. But now if I enter some kind of hour AM and PM, this should now validate, okay? It's not doing anything, but it's also not showing me the alert. So what should it do? Well, it should actually uh, let us uh, make the calculations. But for now, I'm just going to create here this, I'm going to grab onto the submit button that we're passing in. I'm going to change, uh, grab onto this class list, and we're going to add to this class list. Well, remember that variable that we created in CSS, the dot btn, not dot, just btn and green, well, we're going to add it right here. So if this is true, we're going to change that button. And not only that, we're also going to grab onto the button dot in a HTML. And instead of the text of add, we're going to add a HTML symbol. And it's going to be M percent, then hex, then one, zero, 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 and four is going to be that check button. So check this out. Oh yeah, it does add something in here. And this and boom, the button changes. Okay, so this means this has changed. Okay, so we're done with our validation. Now, because the validation is completed, we can now move on to actually calculate the daily hours worked. So let's move down here, calc the daily hours worked. And you will see in the finished code, it's much better commented out. Okay, now for this, we're going to grab onto this worked right here. And now we can change its Right, value, and it changes value by assigning it to something. I could change it to, uh, let's say, no work. So when I'm submitting this, and so it should be valid, then it's going to give me no work, okay? 
So we're not going to do this. We need to calculate here something and the something will be to calc the daily worked hours. So we need this function. Now let's go down here and create this function. So to do, oh, and by the way, this is just an extension. You can go to extensions and search for da, 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 better comments. And this is right here. Install this and going to get these type of comments. You know what? I should do a update on the favorite ex on my favorite extensions that I'm using in in uh, Visual Studio Code. You know what? Leave me a comment down in the description if you wish to see such a video. Function to calculate this right here. Okay, so function and calculate this right here, and this should do something. In order to calculate the hours that we worked in one day, we need to uh, we need to grab onto start work, end work, start break, end break. Basically. When we ending work, we're subtracting our start work, which should leave us with the worked hours. And we should also subtract our breaks from it if we had such a break. Now, for, for types, these are time types. If I would console log here, the, also we will need to pass in here those variables that we created up there. So let's pass in here start work, then end work, then start break and end break. Okay, and also going to pass them in here because this is where, we're, where the function actually executed and the values are passed in. And if I would console log here and this function is executed, start work. So let's just, you know what? I'm going to uh, comment out the validation part because it's, it's getting annoying. Okay, so it's undefined and this is pretty good, but we'd have here no value, but if I would, type off and let's just add we had a start work okay so this and console log it you see it's a string so it's not a time per se it's a string can we do calculations with strings no we cannot so what we can do is change them into into dates in order to do that if i would take out this type of and let's again just push this in here you will see that this string has this hyphen here or this column, sorry. Now we cannot transform this into a number or a time with this column in here. So what I can do, because this is a string, remember, we're going to grab onto the start work and we're going to reassign it. So start work dot, we're going to use the split operator. This is a string and we can use this operator now. And we're going to split it where it has the column. So basically if I would move this console log down here and now console log it, uh, let's start work there, add it. You'll see it's going to return to me a array with two string elements in it. First will be 11 and then 0, 8. This is exactly what we need because we can now assign this to a const, which is going to be, let's call it start work date. And now we can use a date object on it. So we're going to create a new date. And what does a date have? Well, it has days, it has weeks, it has, uh, sorry, months, and it has years. So we're going to pass them all in as zero. We don't need that. Then the next element that they have is the start work. And we're going to, from this array, remember this is an array, we're going to use the very first element. So we can use zero. And then the next element, which is going to be start work and the minutes is going to be one. And we need the seconds and we're going to assign them to zero. So if I would now, Let's just move down the console log again. Uh, console log this right here. Uh, just start work. Yep, that's it. Add it. You're going to see December so far and so on. Okay, perfect. We're basically resetting this to 31st of December, 1900, uh, whatever. But the time, the time is important and we don't have any seconds. We're also setting them to zero seconds. Now we need to do this to all of our variables, all of our inputs. So let's copy this, pum, 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 four times. The first one, just control D, split, then this one, control B, split, and end break, copy, select, control D, and paste it in. Okay, uh, the same thing goes for the, for the other ones, but first of all, I want to calculate the difference between end and start work. Now, I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, move this a bit down so we have a bit of a distance. This is going to be end. So control D, control D, end. And now I can calculate this minus this. Basically, I'm going to create another const, I'm going to call it diff, 
and work. So the difference between start and uh, end and start work. I'm going to take our end work date and we need only the time for it. So we can use the get time operate on it, get time. And we're going to subtract from this the start work and work date. Again, get time operator. Okay, so let's just see. I'm going to replace this in this console log. If I started working at 11 a.m. and I ended my work at 12 p.m., let's just take a look in our console, submit this, we'll have what is this? Well, these are actually minutes. And in order to transform them to hours, we'll need a small function which will just transform it to hours. But we're going to transform this to hours a bit later on when we also calculated our break. But just as you know, we're getting, we're returning a number. We can also check the type of, check the type of this by having a type of and redoing your calculations. If you have not two numbers, then you could do mathematical operations on them. So for now, we got our start and end work. We got the difference between them. Next, we need to calculate our break. So this is going to be work time let's copy it and break time break your ta -dum, face tonight ta -dum, break time okay the break time is basically the same so i'm just going to copy this and replace work work with break and that's all we need for now now let's calculate how much hours did we work if we had a break for this let's create another variable call it diff final within this we're going to check first of all if the, you know what I'm going to use here, eternity operator. So let's put this in a parenthesis. First of all, it could result that it's not a number. We're going to use the is any end. This is going to check if it's not a number function on it. So if the diff work is not a number, then we're going to return zero. But if, if it is, then we're going to return the, the difference between worked hours. Now from this, let me put it actually in a, oh, this is in a parenthesis. Now we're going to sub subtract from this. Well, basically the same thing, but for the difference between breaks. So diff, and I'm going to replace this with break. So the final will be now returned here, actually not here, but at the end of the functionality, but you could console log it right now. This, the problem is it's still a number and now we need to convert it back to time. So in order to do this, let's first of all create a variable called let hours. And this will be using a math operator and floor will take in the diff final. Then we're going to divide it by 1000, which are milliseconds, then minutes, and then, and then seconds, and then hours. Okay, now we have our hours. Now we can redefine or iterate, actually subtract for each difference final by using the minus and equal and hours, and we're going to multiply this with 1060 minutes and 60, actually 60 seconds. And so 1000 milliseconds, 60 seconds and 60 minutes. And the last thing that we need to do is create a const down here because we need to return on our minutes. Okay, and again, we're going to use math.floor, math.floor. And now because the final is redefined using this right here, we just need to divide it by milliseconds and then seconds. And there we go. So at the end of the day, we need to return something that looks like this. Let's go down here and return. So this function will return our hours, but our hours are in minutes and hours. And those hours should not exceed certain numbers. So we can do here a couple of conditioning. Uh, I'm going to use here a parenthesis. The very first condition will be if the hour is less than, not greater than, less than nine, then return zero. And if it's not, then return an empty string. Plus, we need to add something to this. We need to add our minutes, and those minutes are hours, plus a column. Then plus again, if the minutes are less than nine, then again, we're going to return zero, a string, and else we're going to return a empty string, and we're going to add to this the minutes. Okay, and wait a second, you should be, you should be hours, you should be minutes, you should be in a parenthesis, and you should be in a parenthesis. Actually, you are in the parenthesis. Okay, so the format is correct. Now we just need to output it somewhere, and that somewhere is our worked.value, 
which returns this function. So let's see what happens. So let's see, we worked from 1190 to this, then we should get 12 hours. Okay, if I would do here a 10, then I should subtract one hour. We have 11 hours. Let's change the minutes. Let's do here 40 minutes, add again, 11 hours, 21 minutes. Now let's add a break. Let's say we had a break from uh, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And this should subtract now one hour. We should get a result of 11, 21, and there we go. Okay, so we can see that this is working. Also, if we had different minutes here, let's check if this is working. Yep, 90, 50, great. Now, this is done. This is now calculating. So now I'm not going to refresh my validation. Now we need to calculate the total amount of worked hours. So basically, if we complete all of these fields, down here should happen something. It should be the sum of these hours. Now this is pretty complex, so bear with me on this one. As I said, next step is, let's type in another comment, calc total hours worked. So let's get the function that is going to calculate, or this is the where, where the function will be ex executed, calculate total worked hours. Okay, open and close parenthesis, because this is where the function will be executed. Okay, so let's grab onto this function, and let's move down, 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 down here. Let's to do another to-do, create a function to paste this in, and now let's type in function this and this and this. So we're going to create a function that is going to calculate the total amount of worked hours. For this, we need to grab on to all worked hours from the document after they are typed in. So let's create here const all worked hours. Let's go to the document dot query selector all classes of worked hours. So open close quotation and worked hours. And let's also console log this all worked hours. So when we're submitting, we're going to get a node list and nothing is in here because we didn't do anything. Uh, let's do here a quick one and submit and we should now get uh, still nothing because this should be a class. That's why. So let's try this again and boom. And this is why I messed up the, the class here. Okay, so now it should work. Let's try. Sorry about that. I usually don't mess that up and add it 12 and now we have a node list which you have all of the five worked hours and only the first one has a value but th that's not important right now. What is important is that we need to, because this is a node list, we need to convert it to a array. So let's go down here. Let's convert the node list to a array. So I'm going to create a let array of worked hours, hours and it's pretty simple. You just type in array. If you want to convert something to an array and then the from, so from what you wish to create an array, we're going to create it from, close up the left part, from this right here. So let's pass it in here. And now you should get an array if you console log, let's move this down here, console log this and uh, form, not form, from, sorry about that, my typos, okay? And now you're getting an array. This is no longer a not list. You can see here the open and close curve, the open and close square parenthesis. Now we can loop over this using a map or a higher order array method, a method called map. So let's get another variable. Let's call this new because a map actually returns a new array. So let's call this map worked, uh, not map, but new worked hours. And this is going to be the array of worked hours. Now we can use our map on it. So map and for each worked hour, we're going to return the worked hour dot value. So let's move the console log again down and let's console log new worked hour. Okay, and you should get zero, 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 zero and so forth and so on. Now the first one is actually calculating because we're not validating up here. This is why you're getting one zero instead of uh, these zeros. It's basically zero hours. The, the, the rest of them did not calculate right now. If I do another one, then you will see that both of them are now calculated. So remember, this is synchronous. This means the first first things first going to happen is the calculation. Then it's going to be a couple of milliseconds later, grab on to, from the DOM to, to the calculation. In this case, to the value. And in this case, the value is still a string. So remember, we need to do a, a bunch of conversions again. Okay, so we're getting the values and they are in an array, which is perfect. 
Okay, now let me show you something. This array, we can actually add it to a brand new array. So let's, let's just create something. Let array is equal to a empty array. And we can now grab onto this array. And by using the push method, we're going to push to this new hours or new worked hours. So let's do here another console log of array. So I'm going to console up both of them and let's see what happens. Okay, so we're clearly getting here a array of those hours. Now I can go in this new array and map over it and create, because map always creates a new array, create a sub array from it. So sub, you know what? I could actually use also the new worked hours. So let's grab onto the new worked hours. Uh, how should I name this? Let hours. Ah, let converted hours because we're still getting strings. Don't forget this. So converted hours will be our new worked hours dot map. And we're getting each hour back. So each element, we're going to use here a arrow function. And now I want to extract each element from here. And uh, well, let me explain it in another way. We have here a string. We can split this string up as you saw up here. Uh, we can split this string up and at its at a specific symbol. And in, in our case, we're going to split it up in, where the where the column is. So when we're splitting it up where the column is, we're getting back a new array with two different elements. One is the first element and then the second element. And those two are hours and minutes. Now, there is nothing that can calculate hours per minute. You know, if you have one and a half hour plus one and a half hour, it's three hours. But JavaScript does not know that. And you have to kind of convert it on your own. For this is we, why we're going to use this structuring and we're going to destructure this in a new array. So I'm going to use here const. And I don't know if you use React or not, but this is pretty similar to using use state. But in our case, our use state will be, well, let's just see. I'm going to show you what, what, what this is going to do. We're not going to create a variable and then a function that is going to update that variable. But we're basically destructuring this into two variables. One variable is hours and one variable is minutes. Now each of them will be from that element dot can now take that element and split it exactly as we did in our previous function at the hyphen uh, at the column. And now we can return from this function using a parse int. Remember, we need to return numbers, we can return once a hour in a number times 60 plus parse int because again, we need to convert this, we need to convert our minutes into hours, there are still strings and minutes. So as soon as we did this, let's console log it down here. Console log converted hours. And you should see something like this 0000. zero, zero, zero. Okay, now what do we have here? We have a string let, let me just type in a couple of things. Let's type in this and PM and should get 12. And now we have 720. Well, what are this? These are hours plus minutes. Okay, then Let's do another one. Let's do this and let's decrease to PM and let's add this plus eight. And then we have this. Now this represents minutes and it's actually a string, a array of numbers. And what can we do with array of numbers? Well, we can add them together using the reduce operator. So down here after console log, I'm going to create another let, another variable, which is going to calc or calculate, let's type in calculate total uh, hours, the hours and worked. So this means we can grab onto our converted hours. I could do this entirely in one huge cluster, you know what, but you wouldn't understand it then at the end of the day. So this is why I'm doing it here step by step. So we can we're going to take this array. Remember, this is an array. We're going to use the reduce operator on it, and we're going to now use the partial sum. So this is me not creating a callback function somewhere else and using it in here. So partial sum, and then a sum, and then a and this should result because this is the callback function that is going to push in each and every item here, which is the partial sum and then divide it by a because this is the sum of them. And it's also giving me, me a parse int. Again, I do want to have this in numbers of partial sum plus a and then zero. Okay, and this is what should be returned at the end of the day and output it here. Now here is 
Let's go to our HTML, go down, down, down. Here is the total worked hours, which I'm going to just copy and I'm going to go down here. Then when you did this calculation, please go to the document, document dot get element by ID. We're going to grab onto this ID dot value. And this value will be the total calculated worked hours, but you're not quite done yet. So let me show you what will happen. Zero. And let's just type in some kind of number and boom, 720. What the heck is this? Again, these are minutes and now we need to convert them into hours. So I'm going to wrap this into a function. So I'm going to take this and wrap it into a function that will convert, I'll just call this minutes to hours and minutes because this is what we want to see. We want to see X amount of hours and X amount of minutes divide and then a column between them. So let's create this function very quickly. Let's go down here, function, copy and paste, and let's go down here. So it's basically the same thing that we, that we created up here. So this is what is going to be returned. And also we need our minutes or hours. First, we're going to get a const hours. It's basically exactly the same thing, but we do need a function that is doing this. So math.floor and it's taking in the minutes. Remember, we are returning here minutes, a sum of minutes because we're dividing hours by minutes in order to get a total amount of minutes or we're multiplying hours by minutes. This is what we did up here, hours times 60. So nine hour, uh, one hour times 60 minutes is 60 minutes. Two hours times 60 minutes is 120 minutes plus the minutes. And that's why it's returning minutes. Now here, we need to convert it back and return hours and minutes, okay? So math.floor, and we're going to take our minutes that we're passing in here, divide them into 60. And next we're going to create another const and mins, because you can call them minutes. We already have that declared. And this is going to be the minutes that are, that are passed in, and then percentage of 60, okay? So this is basically what is going to, uh, wait. No, this is not quite right. No, this is not right. Wait, I'm going to delete what is in here because it's not what we want to return. We want to return our hours. Actually, I'm going to put this in parentheses. We want to return our hours plus a empty string, then parse, then pet start. And as you can see, this pets the current string with a giving start with a giving string. We're passing here the number two, then zero. We're going to add to this a semicolon. So string of semicolon, and then again, the same thing for the minutes. So min or mins plus a empty string, then pet start, and again, two and zero. And that is it. Now I should get here, the AM, PM, I should get here hours and here hours. If I add another hour here, so I'm just going to add hours, okay? I'm going to add 12 hours to this, this PM, and 24 hours. Now. If I exceed 24 hours, what should happen? Nothing. It's just going to add to it. It's just going to add another 12 hours. Okay, so let's subtract now from this a bit of a break. Let's say that we have a break at 12 p.m. till 13 p.m. or 1 p.m. And hey, something is not right here. So wait, and a.m. Let's check. Whoa, 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 whoa. This should be 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Yeah, that's much better. So we're subtracting one hour. Okay, and now let's come in back our validation. Actually, you know what? We're done with this part. Now it's time to do a bit of refactoring. So this is what we do next Next up, we're going to refactor the code to, well, to have, a much, to have a much, much cleaner code. So let's start at the very beginning. This is right, this is right. We're returning this and we are outputting here. Well, what should we output? We could, output automatically a form which has a event listener on it. So I could do just form. The form should be automatically outputted with a on submit event, which is going to be assigned to a callback function with the event itself and is going to, let's go down here, uh, well, handle the form submission. So I'm going to assign this to handle form submission and it's also going to pass in the event. Now, this is basically how you would also do it in, um, well, in HTML or in React. So if I would add here in HTML, a on event listener of submit, this is basically the same thing. 
So this means I could get rid of my for each. So this is doing its job in here. The for each is automatically doing this add event. So I could, wait a second, uh, I need to delete this for, for each. And now we're going to go down here, delete this. We're not done yet. We're going to change, we're going to delete this. So from a form add event listen, we're going to delete this. We're going to leave the function keyword because we're going to handle the submission. And I need to close this up right here. Okay. So all this is doing is adding to each form a event listener. Now it's listening to the event. Now this should already work. If I click here, it's still working as you can see. Now let's add some kind of timing and boom, this is still working. Okay. So I'm automatically adding a on submit event listener to each and every form as soon as they're pushed into the DOM, which is happening here in the callback function, then they are grabbed on from the DOM. This is why this functionality works. Now within here, we're going to come back in our form validation, and we're also going to add it to a condition. So if, if this returns true, remember, we do have then at the end of this functionality, a return of true, if these conditions are met, only then will this function be executed and also this function will be executed else just return. Okay, so let's see if this works. So if I try to com complete it, no, it doesn't work. If I also try to oh, add these two, this still doesn't work, works because I need to add here a day. So on Monday and now it's working. Okay, so remember we are validating our form we're, we're executing these calculations only if the form validations, the form validation is correct. Okay, so let's see uh, what else did I change? Or oh, what else could we change? Well, I could change this to ternary operator. Basically, I don't need if, don't need this. I just need a question mark here. Then I don't need this. I need here a hyphen and also don't need this. And this should be in a parenthesis. And you should not end here, comma, comma, and nothing. Okay, so let's see. Boom, not valid, something, time, PM, and the calculation isn't executing. Okay, you could also remove the const. As you know, if you declare once const, then you don't need to do this each and every time. Replace this with comma. It's also clear what each and everything now does. Okay, and that's basically it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the project. And most importantly, I hope you learned a lot. Now, please don't forget to like and share this project with others. Also, if you are not already subscribed, then consider doing so because I'm releasing new content like this on a regular basis. If you are interested in becoming a web developer and landing a job as one, then check out my multiple courses in the description. And with this being said, catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.